Hello there, Eddie Mercado here with BloodyElbow.com, and today I will be speaking with the UFC's number four bantamweight, Jimmy Rivera, as he is headed to UFC 219 on December 30th to take on John Lineker. So let's give Jimmy a call and find out what he's been up to since his last fight against Thomas Almeida. Find out his thoughts on replacement opponent, John Lineker. And uh, maybe uh, his future plans for the UFC's Bantamweight division. Ah, Mr. Jimmy Rivera. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for taking out the time. Once again, you are <laughs> on a super tear right now. You have won 20 fights in a row. You are 5-0 and in the UFC and ranked number four in the entire world at 135 pounds. Right now, you're headed to UFC 219, taking on John Lineker, who, you know, is pretty decent in his own right. How are things? Things are good, man. I'm just getting ready for the fight. Um, feeling good for it. Definitely, I think I might be overtraining a little bit. I felt it today, training. Um, but I'm feeling really good, and, you know, we're excited to get out of the cold weather, get a little bit warmer weather, and uh, go put on a show. Awesome. Well, the last time we saw you was UFC on Fox 25. Put on a crazy entertaining bout with Thomas Almeida. I mean, you guys pretty much went toe-to-toe -to -toe the entire time. You really let your hands go. You dropped them like two or three times. You in, you picked up a 30-26 a on one of the judges' scorecards even. So uh, how would you, you feel pretty good about your performance out there? Yeah, I mean, I wanted to get the finish, but let me tell you, he's tough. I mean, he's not... You know, tw it was 21 and 2 for nothing. You know what I mean? I gave him the second loss, his first one from the previous, the champ, Cody. Guy, The guy's tough. I beat him in his own game, stand up. And, um, you know, I tried to get the finish, but, you know, I couldn't, couldn't get it all the way. He's a tough guy. You know what I mean? It was a hard match, but we put on a good show and the fans enjoyed it. Yeah, um, you were really landing your right hand pretty often. And it seemed like your timing was just on. It was just on. What would you say is the the biggest key to timing as a whole? Training, being in shape and just training and working everything. You know what I mean? Working your your boxing, your kickboxing, your wrestling, everything like that. It's very important not to work one aspect of MMA, but work all the aspects individually and put it together. Okay. Did anything surprise you about Almeida at all while you were out there? Yeah, he kept getting up. <laughs> <laughs> he kept getting up, and he did... Uh, we were ready for his jump knee kick, but I like how he switched it up and he threw a jump front kick. So every time he went for the jump knee kick, I, I knew it was coming. It was bad. Then he started adding the jump front kick in there. Called me a couple times. I'm not gonna lie, it was good kicks. But uh, besides that, that's the only thing that you know uh, that we saw a little different. And uh, you know, at the end of the third round, he went for broke, and I just moved and countered and slipped, etc. And you know, it was it was a good fight. He's a tough guy. It was you know a real good match. And, you know, I had fun. I love doing it. I love going out there and putting on the show. Yeah, it was, it was definitely exciting, that's for sure. Now, afterwards, in the cage, you called out Cody Garbrandt, TJ Dillashaw, and Dominic Cruz. You ended up getting booked with Cruz. TJ and Cody fought each other in a, cra in a crazy fight. That, cr that fight was crazy in and of itself. UFC 217. TJ ended up getting the knockout. What did you think of the fight? Were you expecting that? Um, I wasn't expecting TJ to get a knockout. If anything, maybe a decision if he was going to win. Um, I think, you know, Cody had him hurt and got a little relaxed in that second round and got caught. So if he had more time in the first round, I mean, Cody would have, you know, won the fight. But, you know, bell wrong. TJ got back with his wits. And then in that second round, he got Davis with a kick and, didn't see that hook coming, and then TJ took full advantage of it. Yeah, it was wild. A crazy fight. And uh, remember, Cody released a video of their, their training session about where he dropped TJ, and then he dropped him with the same punch in the fight. And it was like, oh, my God, like deja vu, like it's happening again. But TJ hung in there and, and, and you know, and got the job done. He did. He did. That's the crazy thing about MMA. Anything can happen. Absolutely. So you were booked to face Dominic Cruz. He had to pull out due to injury. Big shocker there. Now, John Lineker, he stepped up to take the fight. He's 11-3 and in the UFC. Heavy-handed guy. He comes out to brawl. It's no secret what this guy's coming to do. Are you happy with the matchup? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's a different game plan, but I'm, I'm happy with the matchup. He's been around for a while. I mean, I didn't have much, you know, I, I wanted to be there for, you know, UFC, and, you know, they wanted to keep me on the card, and we just had to work out details, you know what I mean? And, I mean, I'm a team player, so the only problem was is that, you know, you got Cody who's hurt, you got Dom that's hurt already, so we were trying to fight up, and I saw Sal, we were just waiting to see if he was hurt or not, and he's he was hurt, so you have all three guys that are in front of me besides the champ are hurt. So they're trying to work on the Johnson fight supposedly with uh, TJ. So the next best team was Leonard, who's one behind me. So we said, yeah, he wanted to fight. He said he would take the fight. And we said, yeah, of course, we'll fight him. You know what I mean? After we worked everything out, and tried to figure out our options. Yeah, now, did you happen? I know you did. But what did you think of his fight with Cheeto Vera? Were you, were you impressed by his outing? or? I mean, I think that's what was going to happen. Cheeto Vera doesn't have takedowns. Doesn't have any hands, only has kicks. Leonard Kerr's, a, you know, a, a boxer brawler, and uh, he went in there, and you know, Cheeto didn't have much to answer with. You know, what I mean, the guy's, the guy's tough. Don't get me wrong, he can take a punch and a kick, so he kept coming forward, and you know, Cheeto had no answers for him. Now, so Leonard Kerr's a brawler, right? Everyone knows this. Are you think you're gonna stand there and like give him the fight he wants, or are you gonna game plan him, or, or? You know, is there a party that wants to, you know, can you can you stand in front of them and, and, and you know? I, I, You know what? Honestly, I don't know what's going to happen until we get there and I feel it out. You know, when I fought Favor, I just stopped him in every aspect. Like, he tried to do anything on me, I just stopped him. So I don't know how the fight's going to play. I got to see how the first round goes and go from there. We do have a couple game plans with my coaches. But, you know, I never go in a fight with one game plan. I always have three, four, even five game plans. And I'm just going to feel that. I mean, my... my I, I, I'm gonna get my balls buzzed no matter what. My teammate Luis Galano fought Leonard at 25, and they brawled it out. And you see, you could watch the fights actually on my Instagram. And Lewis lands some good shots. Like uh, Lewis was more on the inside, and, and Leonard was on the outside. But then Leonard got rocked. I'm not gonna lie, he got rocked because he went in for a takedown, and he just put him to sleep. He just tapped him out. It was a guillotine, and that was it. So I, I I have to try to win this fight before the second round, supposedly. <laughs> did or if I'm get my balls busted for the rest of my life, <laughs> which I already do under anyway. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I, I don't know how it's gonna play out. I just gotta feel it out. Obviously, I never talked about my game plans beforehand, but I'm just gonna feel it out and see how the fight takes me and go from there. You know, what I mean, when I fought Uriah the first couple minutes, I was like, holy shit, I'm stopping everything. Like he can't hit me with anything. I mean, the only things he hit me was was an eye poke and a nut shot the whole fight. So I was very impressed with my performance alone. So I got to see what happens. They just kind of go with the flow. Did Lewis have green hair when he choked out He's, Lineker? Yeah, he had long green hair. <laughs> He's actually been, he'll be out there. He always comes out with all my fights. And he'll be out there with me. He always helps me get ready. He's very good at mimicking people. You know what I mean? So we had a, we always have a good time, him and I. You know what I mean? My teammates in general are all great. You know what I mean? They help me out so much. Um, when we were training for Dominic Cruz, Lewis and Julio were just moving like Dominic Cruz, and I was sparring them. And let me tell you, you know what I mean? They're unbelievable. Julio Arce was another one guy on a team. Hopefully gets signed to the UFC soon. Now, how would you say your camp is going? I know you just said you, you feel like you've been over overtraining a little bit, but aside from that, how, how would you say it's going? Great. Um, it's going great. Training a lot of pro boxers, training a lot of wrestlers and grapplers. And, you know, I have unbelievable team support, so when I don't have to go far, you know what I mean? And we know a lot of people that are close by and we just train a lot. It's going really well and uh, you know, it's not that I can complain. I, mean, I feel good. Um, push it hard today in the gym and I think the last couple of days I've been going super hard. So, I'm, you know, you feel it when you go super hard so I got to take it, take it back a notch. But uh, besides that, I'm feeling really good. Okay, and do you have a specific prediction, a specific outcome? How do you see this fight playing out? I don't know, man. I had a crazy dream last night that I was fighting him, and I was just beating the crap out of him and staying up. So I don't know how the fight's gonna gonna play out. I mean, obviously I'm gonna try to knock him out, but he's a tough dude. He could take a punch, but I could give a punch and take it. And like when I fought Pedro Munoz, it was just a war, and we beat the shit out of each other. He didn't look so good afterwards, but he was a tough, you know, he was a tough competitor, man. He's he's a top top 15 ranked guy now after after he fought. So I don't know how the fight's gonna play out, but I'm definitely looking for a finish with this grabbing a limb, grabbing his neck, or, or knocking him out. Now, million-dollar question. If John Lineker misses weight, will you still fight him? Um, 
if he misses weight, yeah, I think I would still fight him. Why? Why wouldn't I fight him? I never. That's never crossed my mind, actually. Okay. Because uh, I know you know he has a history of, of not showing up on the nose. <laughs> yeah, he has a history of doing that. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure he, he he'll show up on the nose. Um, I don't know. You know, I mean, he had plenty of time. I mean, how many weeks out were we? We we've been when well, we announced the fight, maybe a month, month and a half out. Yeah, something like that. Uh, yeah, and, and he was already in shape. He just finished the fight two or three weeks prior to that. I mean, I don't depends. I mean, if he doesn't, yeah, I'm still I'm still gonna fight. I'm just gonna enjoy some of his purse, you know. Right, right. Is there like a maximum <laughs> amount of pounds you would give him, or whatever's clever? No, so I I'm not sure how the commission is in Nevada. Um, I know some commissions you get like say if it's like it all depends how many pounds he's off. Some commissions they give you all the money for it. Or some commissions, they split it. So you like, let's say it's, you know, whatever five percent of the purse, I'll get two point five, and then the commissioner of commissions get two point five or something like that. Okay. Like it all depends. Like every commission is different. I don't really know Las Vegas because this is gonna be my, my, my really my first time fighting besides as an ultimate fighter. It's my first time really fighting in Vegas. So I, I'm not sure how it works out over there, but uh, it's not really crossed my mind. I assume he's gonna be professional and make weight, you know? Yeah. Let's hope. Anyways. That's for sure. Now, yeah, it's not gonna be any catch weight though. I'm not gonna be like, oh, we'll do a catch. I'm like, nah, one thirty six, and I get something for his purse. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, with a win, is there any logical reason why you won't be next in line for a title shot? It all depends on what the UFC says, man. I, you know, I've haven't thought past it. Yeah, I've thought a little bit past it, but I haven't really dwelled on it. Um, it all depends on what the UFC says, and it goes from there. What? fights and matchups are going to make. I mean, you got both Dom and Cody who are on the loss, so, I mean, obviously it makes sense for them to fight each other. You know what I mean? That's a good rubber match. Um, and then you got, uh, you know, Asansa, who's on a three or four fight winning streak right now. So, I mean, I think what makes the most sense is that if, you know, TJ does drop to fight the fight shots and they should do an inter bell, or the number one contender should be me and Asansa fight, you know, either or. I mean, that makes the most sense if TJ doesn't stay at 35 and uh, if he drops down. Honestly, I think, you know, everybody's been dropping down and dropping up. They've done inter belts for it. They should do inter belt for Sansa 9 and we'll fight, you know, when TJ comes back up. Because he is technically vacating the, the title. He's going to drop down and fight for the belt at a lower weight class. Okay. Now, I know you said in the past that rankings mean nothing. They're, you know, for the casual fan, basically. But what about the title? Does that does that mean anything special to you? I mean, I've got the UFC. I tell people all the time, it's like I got the UFC not to be a UFC fighter, but to be the champ. And that's the main goal is to win the belt. So whatever it takes to win the belt, that's what I want to do. You know what I mean? Some fights, you know, like some people are throwing at me, and I'm like, that's not going to help me fight and get to the belt. You know what I mean? So I don't, that doesn't make sense. But other fights are like, yeah, that makes sense. Let's, let's do it, you know? And I figure, you know, Cody got on a five-fight winning streak and they got a title shot. All right, if I beat Leonard, that's six fights in a row. Something's got to happen. Okay, now once you become the champion, what will be your goal then? To defend the title or chase super fights or? Defend the title. Defend the title. Unless the UFC has something special they want to do, defend the title. You know what I mean? That's really, that's really it. I mean, if, if you know, like, Dana wants CJ to fight Japanese shots and okay, I understand. You know what I mean? Money fight, he can win a second battle, TJ. But when it comes down to it, I'm going to defend it. You know, all these people, I want to hold the weight class. All these people want to fight. But if he does say, listen, I want you to fight at 45, we want to do a money fight. I can't say no, it's my boss. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so it all depends on what they say. This is the same thing like you're asking me about after winter, but I'm like, I don't really know. It's all depends on what the UFC says to me, and then we kind of go from there. You know what I mean? No one can know. No one's guaranteed a title shot. You know what I mean? They, you know, it's not... TJ did the uh, controls to the division that day. It's Sean Shelby. So what Sean says to me, and we figure it out from there and go from there. All right, final question. How are you going to spend New Year's Eve? Are you going to still be in Vegas for it? I will be in Vegas with my wife, some of my family, and my friends are coming out. So we decided to leave after New Year's and hang out in Vegas and have a good time and enjoy it a little bit. I mean, you're in Vegas. There's no point leaving on the 31st. Might as well just stay out there and just 
you know, have a good time and do something new. I've never been to Vegas for New Year's. My wife hasn't either. Is your first time in Vegas? Sure. It's her second time in Vegas. The first time she was a kid, so she didn't get to experience it. It's like my fifth time in Vegas. I don't find anything special, but it's cool to go with her and then we can go to all the casinos and walk around, check them out. Like, I did that the first, first time and I had a blast, like, just sightseeing and checking out the different casinos and how they look and stuff. And the first time I did enjoy it a lot because I, I was here with my teammate, his first fight at UFC, so I got to eat and enjoy all the restaurants there. <laughs> un fucking believable. So, I'm not going to be able to do that. And my wife's a vegan now, so... I'm going to be able to enjoy myself in a way because we could go and she needs something healthy because that's the way she is and I'll enjoy myself eating something healthy. But, uh, oh, we love the people watch. Yeah. Well, we like the people watch a little bit too. But, uh, that's the best. Enjoy it in Vegas and have a good time, you know? Yeah, people watching in Vegas is, is, is spot on. <laughs> oh my God, it's hilarious. I mean, people watching in general when you go to a club or something like that, you pick out, you know, find the drunk people or see what they're doing. I mean, I don't, I don't really drink a lot so we go out. I mean, we don't even go out that much anymore. Old. Hey, uh, I'll, pe I'll people watch at Walmart. I don't care. I people watch everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I'm gonna call Walmart over here. It's like <laughs> Christmas joy. I have, the only Christmas presents I bought were for her, and she bought me. We already gave our each other our Christmas presents, and that's it. Like I haven't bought anybody for my family. I told everybody like after New Year's, we'll do Christmas. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I'm not doing anything right now. I just don't have the time and don't want to wait the energy and the focus right now i just want to focus on this fight and that's what i've been doing i've been focused on this fight didn't enjoy thanksgiving again another year in a row and uh you know even last year i was supposed to fight caraway in january canceled my honeymoon didn't enjoy christmas thanksgiving or new year's so this year i'm probably gonna get new year's i can enjoy but i'm not enjoying thanksgiving or, or christmas and then hopefully we'll be able to go on our honeymoon you got any sponsors or people you'd like to give a special shout out or thank you to? Yeah, real quick to uh, uh, you know, Tiger Gear Fight Gear that supplies me with all my gear, I'm getting ready for my fights. Um, Nutribio supplements, Nutribio um, give me all my aminos and my protein and stuff like that. And the last thing is Eat Clean Row, help me you know get ready for my fight, eating healthy and and get a lean and, and get a fit for it. And I just like thank you guys. Awesome. I, anytime, always a pleasure. Mr. Jimmy Rivera, huge fight on your plate. John Lineker, December 30th, UFC 219 in Las Vegas. Best of luck to you, sir. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me on. I'll talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Take care. So there you have it. The UFC's number four bantamweight, Jimmy Rivera, headed to UFC 219, taking on John Lineker. That's going down on December 30th. Go check that out. In the meantime, you can read me over at bloodyelbow.com. You can follow me on Twitter at the Eddie Mercado. If you like this interview, please hit the like button. That's the thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel right here. Subscribe to Bloody Elbow's YouTube channel right there. Check out these interviews right there. Now go be a good person.